There are so many fun ways you can close and finish these up. I usually close by machine with free motion quilting fairly near the edge so that even if you pull open the edges, no raw edges are visible. That's why I leave my seam allowances long in this area. A little hand stitching is always a great idea too. Here's how I close the big brown leaf using my interior serrations to help secure the edge. A little free motion quilting. I knew I was planning to paint this edge as well. Now I want to point out what's going on with all of these on this green monstera leaf. I fused the Peltex to the colorful fabric originally, but then I pulled it off and I wrapped the green fabric around and fused it instead. Then I got the colorful layer as neatly as I could. It's this switching which is fused that can create a little bit of puckering in the corners. But because you've trimmed most of your seam allowance down to 3 16 to an eighth of an inch, you should be able to get this to look pretty neat. Instead of free motion quilting this one, I'm going to stitch around this complex monstera leaf with my edger foot, which can be a little dicey on some of these tight curves. This kind of stitching is super slick and precise if you're going around an oval or an oblong shape or rectangle. And I'm gonna I overlap but I end with these tiny stitches so that I just I don't have a ton of back stitching all over in the same place. Okay okay so this will flatten out when I iron it. Peltex loves the steam iron and uh, I've got a little show through. I could get paint on that if I want later. And then I'm just going to show you, see it's pretty close to the same size. It's it's a little bit bigger because I stitched a little bit past the Peltex. But anyway, um, these areas, I'm going to draw those and I'm going to kind of exaggerate them. And I'm going to do that on all four. Kind of plan that. All right. And then I'm going to kind of do this veining. I'm just going to kind of come down through here. And then I'll look at my, my picture for reference and kind of do that and that. I can make this leaf veining show up with either paint or with thread. And this has enough light and dark that I'm going to do it with paint, which I can do like in a very light color. And so what I'm planning to do is paint two colors. I'll mix them a little bit, but basically these areas I'm going to paint kind of a brown, bronze, and I might do uh, some of the edges as well. We'll have to see if I feel like that when I'm doing it. But then I am going to paint in my veins, and so they need to be wide enough that you can easily paint in those. I'm just going to do these areas first, these four areas. I'm going to do these four areas first, and then I'm going to come back and do the veining sort of all together. And so you'll see that right now. Okay, when you free motion quilt, it's never a bad idea to pull up threads, even when you're so near the edge like this. We're, that's what we're doing. We're going for nearly perfect, and we're going to try to do it in a way that it seems pretty darn perfect. But we're imitating nature, which is sinuous and flowy. We're not in, in, imitating uh, geometric shapes. So we're going to use paint to kind of make this part uh, different. And I have a dark table and my glass table. I think there might be shadow under. I don't know. I'm just going to do this dark and the veins light. And with other uh, subject matter, you can use an area that you don't want to cut out and just paint it darker, or in some cases lighter, to sort of create that detail without having to actually cut into your area. It's like a stencil where you alter. Now when you're quilting, it's very important that you don't do a lot of this and then quilt onto it because that's going to contort things more. I find it's better if you are hitting your throat, you're hitting this, and I have my light 
stem back here and I have my thread take up and I've always got other projects in the back here. If I'm hitting that stuff and can't move it out of the way, I'm going to just fold this. I find that that makes less contortion near the needle than doing this. I like to, even though I do this a lot when I'm quilting batting, I don't like to do it lift up like this with the Peltex. Don't lift your Peltex, fold it. And then did I just lift it? Okay, this has a little bit of... Did I just do the opposite of what I meant to do? I'm just stitching fairly wide veins. Sorry I didn't move the camera back over. But this is fairly easy quilting. If you can quilt, you can do this. If you can't quilt, you could straight stitch this. It might be helpful to flip the piece over and straight stitch the fused side. You'll have to redraw your veins on that side. All right. So I've pressed this with steam and look how nice and flat it is now. And I'll just let it cool because if you start manipulating it now, you're gonna make it cool a little rumpled. We want to leave this nice and flat. It's already almost cool. I am going to get some of that chalk off there before I paint. It doesn't really matter. But Next I set up in a sunny room to do my painting. I've covered this before so I'll go pretty fast. Let me know if you need more. I like these Jacquard Lumiere fabric paints. They need to be heat set to become permanent. I thin a little with water so the paint sinks in, but it shouldn't be runny. Runny may actually heat set, but it will likely flood through to your backing. I enjoy this work, but it takes a long time. It took about 40 minutes to do this. It'll be finished after tomorrow when I heat set it. I'll follow the manufacturer's instructions and provide some ventilation by opening the door in the window in the sewing room. And I'll also uh, use a press cloth if I feel that my ironing board cover or my iron or my project could in any way become discolored. After I finished and I put everything away, I decided this gold was too garish. So I came back and toned it down by overpainting with some of the bronze paint. Here it is. I think this one is finished, but let's look at some of the others. This is my snowman, and if anyone wants a few uh, ideas for painting, I, I wasn't even going to include this in the course. And my advisory committee, because I just made this for myself for fun, my advisory committee said put it in. And so I did draw up a similar, very similar pattern, and I traced the snowman, and then I just used the uh, text and shape tools to make the other parts. But anyway, this is all quilted. I quilted every one of these elements and uh, then painted them. And if anybody wants some thoughts on painting this and how I did it, I marked mine with the um, water soluble ink and I had to wet some parts over and over and you can see there's still some of it on the back that has to be re-wet and you can see where I kind of went towards a watercolor with my fabric paint I have a little bit of bleed through from the front so my main comment is don't work too wet which I did sort of here because my green paint is practically dried up but um let me know if you want more on that. Most of my leaves have free motion quilting between the veins and here it really gets lost because of the color. You can barely see it. But here, if you can see that in this light, I really like how this yellow quilting looks. I also really care for this yellow quilting on this uh, off-white fabric that's sparkly. This one I skipped it. I didn't want to distract any more from the cute print and I wanted the cute print to show up. I just thought I'd mention how I did this. On this one I put a little bit of green marker underneath and then I painted over with some gold and I'm pretty sure this will all heat set but I wanted you to be able to really see the design 
but then still be able to see the leaf. On this one, I wanted something that would be um, a little delicate. I did put a little bit of green in my gold paint to make it a little bit more of that brassy looking gold. This one I've used a, kind of a russet with gold and done more of where you really see both colors a lot in different areas. I did the same thing here, but I also added some black in this one. Thanks. <laughs>